Hey, what's going on? My name is Jack, and welcome back to Loud Movies. Today, we're going to be talking about Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. This is our classic review, where we just talk about classic films here on the channel. And if you do enjoy today's video, please leave a like, comment down below whether you've seen this film, if you have, and what your favourite scene is within the film, because I have a couple within this film. This film is more of a darker Indiana Jones film, but we'll get into that in just a sec. So, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, really, where do we start off with? except for saying it is a fantastic film in its own respect. It's um, Steven Spielberg's first ever sequel that he's ever done in his entire career. He had never done a sequel before this, I believe, but George Lucas works in trilogies, and he worked in solo films, and Spielberg was like, let's, let's, let's do a sequel. And uh, Spielberg was a bit like, yeah, I don't know, mate. Uh, you know, I've never done sequels before. But they ended up doing this movie, and Spielberg said, you know... It's one of the darker Indiana Jones movies. And I've seen people who who were kids when they've uh, when this film released. And they even said that, you know, they didn't actually go and see this film because of how dark it was. I think the film is pretty dark. It's got one of them sort of uh, feels to it that, that makes it more darker than Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark. But this film acts as a sequel and a prequel. How I mean by that is it is the second Indiana Jones film to release, so it is a sequel. But it was set before Raiders of the Lost Ark, which means it's a prequel. So, <laughs> it's one of them sort of confusing films where you're a bit like, wow, okay, let's be real here, come on, w w what's there to really do? But Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, it shows Indy going for this diamond... And he finally gets this diamond after giving over some someone's ashes and stuff. But Indy then gets poisoned. So he decides he's going to threaten one of the dancers, uh, Willie Scott, who, uh, you know, who he doesn't know. He doesn't know this person. So, the, the movie shows in a very good way that Indy will do anything and everything to get this antidote to begin with. And he finally gets it, he takes it, and then the movie really begins. Because he's he's in a car, this is the thing, they, this is how they introduce one of the characters. It's a kid driving a car, and Willie goes, there's a kid driving the car! He goes, shut up lady! And you know, the, the film is just action, 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 and uh, the thing that Spielberg does really well within this film is it sort of portrays Indiana Jones as sort of a loving character and you know a father figure to this kid which is something you of course you didn't see in raiders um so it's a very interesting uh, piece of history there that you know this this is a kid that he cares about he you know he's gonna look after this kid so with that you know moving on forward from that point is that indiana jones it really the temple of doom Start off in a way that's a bit strange because they just crash onto this island. They don't particularly want to be on this island. They don't particularly want to be in India, but they are. And then they start hearing about the fact that the palace that India and everyone else has believed has not been ruled in centuries is being ruled by somebody. Then they also believe that they also don't believe in like the voodoo myths and stuff that the. the some people are saying, and he goes, it's all just, you know, it's legend, it's not, it's not the truth, <sighs> and then they start to find out, you know, you start to find out as viewers, that the, the children that live in this, uh, this, this land, don't actually, they're, 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 they're not around, they've been abducted, so, they set off for Dallas, they call it, but, they go to this palace, and that's where the film really starts to pick up his feet, they have the, with the prince, they, they, they eat with the prince in the kingdom, and the prince goes, you know, he says sad some ground rules, that he doesn't want his palace to turn into what it was hundreds and hundreds of years ago. He wants this palace to be different. He's the way of change. And then you sort of meet your first real encounter with the new bad guys of the film. So, with this, with the, with the bad guys in play, you see Indy sort of having an argument with Willie about how he's not easy and she's not easy and he says, I won't be back you'll be back in five minutes and then he's not back in five minutes, he, he waits a bit longer and then he starts to get attacked 
the one thing about this film that I will say was that it was filmed with a stunt double for probably the majority of it because Harrison Ford broke his back. He, uh, he injured his back pretty bad. I don't think he broke it, but I think he, he injured it pretty severely, just like he's done in Indiana Jones 5. This isn't the first time they've had to use a stunt double for Indiana Jones filming just main location stuff and just normal scenes. So this film, of course, here yeah, is back. And they weren't even sure that he's, you know, be able to do the second one at all at this point. But then he went to LA, he got operated on, he was like, yeah, I'll be back in three months. But they said six, he was back within three, he just built up the body mass and everything. And he proved everybody wrong. So with that, Indiana Jones was back on the screen and back rolling. The, my favourite scene within the film has to be the scene where... It, it, it's really just, it's one big scene to me, is Sean Round flames Indy and the action starts. And Indy starts beating the hell out of people and then, you know, he goes forward with it. And all the slaves are pushing carts and bang, and this guy comes crashing down and Indy stood there with Sean Round. And the, the, the most favourable part about that scene is probably when they're on, he's running the big guy. And they're on this, uh, I'd say like a turnbuckle. Big roller coming towards them. And this kid is stabbing Indy. It's a short round. Goes up there. He fights this kid. He saves Indy. And then he goes... Um, so the second that this... Because uh, it looks like Indy's going to die. He keeps going back on this turnbuckle. And he pulls the knife out. And he goes... Da, 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 da. Music starts. John Williams' score starts. Amazing score from him once more. He's done so many incredible scores, I really cannot say which one's my favourite. And he then started beating the living hell out of this guy. Smacking him in the face. And eventually, of course, Indy escapes, as we know he would. So, <laughs> from there, that's my favourite scene, is where, you know, the music comes in, he rips the knife out, and Indy starts, you know, he gets away. And the swinging on the light, and he just... It, it's one of them films that... A very dark film, very much hated upon parents at the time, I found out. Like, you cannot go see this film, this one's darker. It's like a Batman Returns situation. There's another classic review here on the channel I will be having, or I'll also be discussing that sort of situation. But this is the darker of the four films. And I think with Indiana Jones, Temple of Doom, I don't think Spielberg initially thought it would be dark. But he wanted to set it away from Raiders. Because he didn't want to do a Raiders 2. He wanted to do something completely different. And he did, he did something completely different. He literally only had, really, Indiana Jones. And, you know, uh, I don't even think Marcus is featured in the film. No, he wasn't. It's, it's literally just Indiana Jones is there. That's the only character that really appears from the first film. The, the other films, no, no other character appears. So, Spielberg finds his feet within the sequel. And then the film can go on to do better things. So, but being the darker film, it, it, it being the standout, you know, standout one of this is the, the odd one in the pack of these films. Stephen did that because he didn't want to create a Raiders two. He wanted to create a sequel. He wanted to create a completely different, entirely new film, which is Harrison Ford reprises the role and plays Indy, which he did fantastically. Of course, the, the the third film in the series, The Last Crusade, I'm about to stick it on, about to do that, about to watch that before I do the, that review. That was the last Indiana Jones movie until 2008's Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. So with that being said, guys, I will see you all within the next video. Goodbye for now. And if you guys were excited for Last Crusade, very much excited for that. I'm going to try and put these videos out simultaneously, so the second one, then the third, then the fourth, because I just want to do my ranking. I get my first ever ranking out there to you guys, so you guys can see what this channel really does focus on over here. So with that being said, I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye for now.